So I'm Karen Cranston. I'm an evolutionary biologist, and I work at a research center in Durham called Nessent. I'm going to talk today about our efforts to use Creative Commons, specifically CC0, in order to free scientific data. I'm going to start with a historic anecdote. So when Galileo first discovered the rings of Saturn, he announced it with this anagram um, to establish precedence, but completely obfuscate what he'd actually done. Um, in contrast, when we think about sort of more modern science, um, BLAST is one of the most popular programs in bioinformatics. It's released with a public domain license. And the authors get their scientific cred by the huge number of citations that this program has got, despite the fact that it's publicly available. So Nesset, the center I work for, we fund um, evolutionary biology that doesn't involve the collection of new data. So <coughs> methods, data synthesis, it means we're really, really interested in making scientific data widely available, which it's not right now. Much scientific data is either behind paywalls, it has restrictive copyright agreements, or even worse, it's trapped on someone's laptop to be lost permanently in a hard drive crash. So th there are some kinds of data that are kind of widely shared. Sequence data in GenBank, protein structure data, it's the community norm to share that data, there's repositories. What we're interested in is this long tail of other types of scientific data that people aren't sharing right now. So we've developed a data repository called Dryad that will accept any kind of scientific data associated with a publication. So a CSV file, an image, um, any sort, anything in that long tail of data. Part of putting your data into Dryad is checking this box to say that by submitting your data, you're putting it under a Creative Commons Zero license, um, sorry, or waiver, to means that anyone can do anything with the data that you're submitting. And there's lots of reasons why we use CC0, but really, it's simple. No one has to explain what you can do with the data and can't do with the data, and scientists don't need to hire lawyers to determine what we can do with the data that we produce. So that was our decision with CC0. As an example, um, this is a data set in Dryad. It's um, a bunch of character data on trees, about 8,000 taxa or species. Um, and the authors have put the entire data set in a CC0. Other authors take that data set, add more data, reformat, do new analysis, publish, then publish their new data set, expanded data set, back in Dryad. Someone else can use it, can build on their work, can build on the previous author's work. So there's 31 journals at the moment and growing that have signed on to this joint data archiving policy. So that data, if you publish in these journals, has to be publicly available, either in Dryad or another repository. You're also seeing the same thing with funding agencies. Now, my center has a long-standing policy about open data, open source software, but you're seeing moves with NSF towards data management plans as well as NIH. But those sort of sticks are not enough. We know that if we look at, for example, this study with gene expression data, Databases exist, there's agreements to share data. Only 35% of studies are actually making their data available. In an example that's a little bit closer to my heart, I build these evolutionary trees of how species are related. We publish tens of thousands of them, but 96% are only available as figures in a PDF file. So the data is not being deposited. So in addition to sticks, we want to talk about carrots. So there's an increasing number of publications now showing that if you make your data available, your paper gets higher citations. Scientists, we care about citations. They get us tenure. <laughs> um, increasing interest in alt metrics. So Impact Story is a startup um, that's looking at not just what have you published in terms of publications, but what data sets have you published, what software repositories do you have, and who's citing them, using them, talking about them. Figshare, another example um, for sharing publications, text, figures, pre-publication, post-publication. Again, they use CC0 to ensure that any of the data there can be reused by others. So CC0 plays an important role in this ecosystem um, of open science. So open access for our publications, open source for our software, CC0 and open data so that the products of our research are available to everyone. So, I'm an academic, there's the thank you slide. Um, Nelson and Dryad are NSF funded, and thanks to Todd Vision from Dryad and Heather P.O.R. from Impact Story. Thanks. <laughs>